first, just think about the hips staying level. But then you can start thinking about going forward, going back, deeper, deeper, high, high, okay? Okay, we'll finish up the last 10 minutes. We're gonna do the wave stepping, which is a langbu, langbu. So wave stepping, like the ocean, waves coming in, waves coming out. So you can just watch me first. Um, we're gonna be stepping, but it's stepping, following, stepping back and following. It's kind of like a little dance. So if you just think of the feet going forward, stepping back. So the left foot or whatever foot we start with will stay in front and we're just gonna do this, okay? That's the basic footwork, like a wave going forward, a wave going back. All right, we want to sink our weight a little bit. This is a little bit like internal. There are definitely some parallels to internal. So if you think about dropping your weight slightly so your knees are bent and our hips, we do not want to be fully out like this. We want it to be slightly in. So it's kind of like Tai Chi that way. And we'll, sh well, you can follow me now. You can go left foot forward, right foot follows, but don't put the foot flat, just kind of go on the ball of the foot. Then bring the right foot back, same thing with the left foot, just touched on the ball of the foot forward back forward back you really do want this to feel like a wave like a pendulum swinging forward and back notice my weight for these steps i'm not going up and down up and down my weight is staying level my hips are staying at the same height very similar very similar to like sun style tai chi or even in the like in the 42 you do that following step. It's very, very similar. Okay, so that's the basic stepping. The hands, it's called a neitren sho, which is like inner, inner circling hand, which is you know, the hand goes out with the palm up, turns, comes back with the palm down. Out with the palm up, back with the palm down. These hands should be really relaxed, okay? It's not a palm, it's not a fist. It's just kind of this in between. Again, I would deduct you if we're doing contemporary wushu, but that's not what we're doing. Palm up on the way out, turn the palm down back. And you notice my arm is never fully extended. It's staying real round. Up, back, up, back. There's a question. Back foot has a slight turnout? Yes. Yes. When we come back, the foot is slightly turned out. Good question, Marilyn. Okay. Out, back. So try this with both hands. Out with the palm up, back with the palm down. Out with the palm up, back with the palm down. Try, the, try both hands separately. And then when you feel comfortable, you can do them at the same time. As the hand goes out, the palm is up. When it comes back, the palm is down. And the hands are alternating, they're going in 100 degree, uh, 180 offset. That makes sense, but completely offset. I need to look this up. What's the right word here? Ah, offset? Opposite? Maybe opposite. Okay, so that's the basic hands. You want to think about your shoulders and your hips moving like pistons on a, on a train. So remember st steam engine trains, right? We all remember those, we all grew up with those is that they're, one's going forward and this goes back. But they're not linear, they're also circular. So there's this turning aspect. Notice how my chest is kind of hollowed out. So I'm, we're not doing Chong Chen, we're not, we're not doing this. You're relaxed and doing this. So we'll just do this with the hands. Forget about the feet. Go to a nice controlled pace. The hands never stop moving. It's very similar to Tai Chi in that way. Right when it goes out, it turns and comes back. As it comes back, it turns and goes out. Nature and show. Okay, notice my hips are also moving. So when we add this to the steps, it will coordinate with the, what the legs are doing. Okay, Brandon, all right. you crossing over your hands, like one hand is going over the... Kind of, yeah, if you think of a center line here, the hands are going in front of the center line, the other hand follows on the center line. So they're not crossing like, crossing crossing they're just going over in the center line yeah 
It's very similar to like Xing Yi, right? If you ever learned Xing Yi, like a like that. It's very, very similar. Not started. in the energy creation, but uh, the mechanics of it are similar. Okay, let's add the two together, okay? We'll start with the left foot forward. So think about when we walk, right? When we step with our left, our right hand goes forward. When we step with our right, our left hand goes forward. It's gonna be the same thing. So we're gonna step forward with our left with our right arm goes out. Step forward with the left, right arm goes out. When we step back with the right, left hand goes out. So just do this kind of robotic at first. Step with the left, right hand goes out. Step back with the right, left hand goes out. Step forward with the left, right hand goes out. Step back with the right, left hand goes out. Okay, once you've got the general mechanics of this, then start making it smoother. Don't stop. Like a wave, kind of coming into the beach and out. It's very fluid. Your stepping is very controlled. I'm not stepping heavily or hev heavy. And my hands are very circular. And then once you get that feeling, you can start thinking about the shoulders and that piston motion. So then when you extend out, rather than just going here, you can turn. So then the first movement can be out and back here. Out, back, out, back, out, back. Okay, let's switch feet. Let's go right foot forward. Same motion, just switched up. Uh, right foot leads. When we step with the right, our left hand goes out with the palm up. Step back with the left, right hand goes out with the palm up. Step forward with the right, left hand goes out, palm up. Step back with the left, right hand goes out, palm up. Get the mechanics of it. Then slowly start making it smooth not stopping forward, not stopping back, then try to get a little bit more body. Use those shoulders, hollow the chest. You can think of almost kind of rounding the back. Yeah, let's try this a little bit more That's and then good. I'll show you some variations. Um, is our you said, do our hips stay completely level the whole time or do they like, is there a okay. slight bounce to it? Okay, good, good, good question. So she's asking about the hips. For now, I think as you start to learn this, it's better to think of it staying even. So it's just forward and back, right? The, I'll show you some variations of this, but some variations is you could go low, out. You could do it this way. You could also go high. You can go high, high, high. It's first get the feeling of the wave, right? It's a great, some of those Chinese words like snake creeps down. It's like, what does that mean? But wave stepping, I think is like the perfect way to explain it. So first, just think about the hips staying level. But then you can start thinking about going forward, going back, deeper, deeper, high, high. Okay. Okay, yeah, relax a little bit, relax a little. I'll show you some variations on this. So, exactly what I just said. When you first start learning it, just think about getting that forward and backward, right? How do I keep my hands doing the nature and show, which is a very simple movement, but if you're used to, you know, this stuff, it might be unfamiliar. So it's soft and circular back. Then you get, your waist and your shoulder involved, right? So I'm not like Chang Chun like this. I'm rounded, chest is hollow, out, and then it pulls back, out, back, out, back. So you can do this like just with the hand, you can do it with just the other hand, you can do it with just the feet, or you can do it together, okay? Once you feel comfortable with that, the following step, whether that's forward, or back, you can, do, you can try it with the foot not touching. Right, so the way I taught you is step forward, follow and touch, step back and touch. You can do it where you don't touch it. So you can start doing this.
This is like a killer exercise for your legs. So try that. You can keep your weight high. You can, you can just do this. This is totally fine. If you feel comfortable, think about going low, but that following foot, whether it's going forward or back, does not touch the ground. Uh, another concept for wushu is to uh, so kwa, right? So the kwa is this area. It's the hip, which is also like the tailbone and the sacrum. It also has to do with the two joints of the hips. So to so kwa means to um, like uh, sink the hips or retract the hips. So if you think of like a lot of wushu, we're doing this kind of stuff, right? Like these are our stances. But to so qua, you would bring this in and up. So this is the feeling you would go for. Changshan, we would think about this, right? So qua would be in, tuck the hip, bring it in. Same thing forward, bring this hip in. I'm not doing a kotui ping hung, right? I'm coming in, back, forward, back, forward, back, okay? So try the following leg not touching the ground and the idea of so kwa, so kwa. Don't think like Changchun, bringing the hip up, hip closed. That step back, you're retreating. Someone is attacking you, either with their hand or maybe they're trying to kick your leg. What would you do if they're trying to kick your leg? Bring it in. In Changchun, that move would be this. Right, bringing the leg in, protecting our groin. For the uh, langbu, the move is this. Here. Uh, try this on both sides. Oh, which style is this? Rodolfo, this is Liu He Ziran Men. It is currently not a popular style. There's, I've, I've, looking online, I've only seen like a handful of schools. The teacher that made it famous, you can keep practicing or you can listen to me is a, my teacher's teacher. His name is Wan Lai Shen. So Wan Lai Shen, if you know the history of Wushu, like in the late 1920s in China, there was this nationalist movement to try to unify martial arts. Um, so there was, that's like the whole era of like the North and the South coming together and they did these Lei Tai fights to say who was the strongest. This is all like 1928, 29. Wan Lai Shen kind of got famous during that time he wrote some pretty uh, popular books on Wushu. One of his books is, historians say, oh, it's like the first, he was like Bruce Lee before Bruce Lee. He was talking about how do we modernize Chinese martial arts and bring it together with, take the useful by testing it in application, and that becomes the style. So Liu He Zuran Men is two styles. Liu He, Liu He Chen, you've probably, maybe you've heard of Liu He Chen, and then Zidan Men. So Liu He Chen has all these forms that look like Shaolin Long Fist. And the Zidan Men almost has no forms. It's just these drills. It's like stuff like this. It's like open, close. It's all these like soft. They have these drills where they're like walking around with the iron uh, rings on their, on their arms. They do this crazy conditioning stuff like hitting sandbags and things. So then Wan Lai Shen, or actually the, his teacher, unified those two, Liu He Chen and uh, Zeran Men. It was really cool. It looks super weird, but it's got stuff that I've never seen in other Chinese martial arts styles. Like there's roundhouse, like uh, uh, hook, hook, hook punches, gut punches, and it's all like continuous fighting. So if you take this this basic drill, then you add all this other stuff of like forward, back, protect, attack, go on the side. Elbow, hook, up, like super, super mobile. Oh, we've run out of time, sorry. That's what you get. Ask me a question, I go off on a tangent.